Hey everyone, I'm Becky and welcome to my mukbang channel. Uh, today we're just going to be eating, well, just about everything. I mean, everything looks so delicious and delectable. So where should we begin first? Should I have a piece of that chocolate cake? Or maybe I should guzzle all that Coca-Cola? Or maybe I can have this nice cupcake right here. You know what? Screw it. We're just going to eat everything. Hmm. <laughs> Wasn't that delicious? And didn't you enjoy me eating it all? Let me go get some more food, and I'm just gonna be here for the next half hour, and we're gonna be eating everything that we can, okay? Back in a sec. Oh, hey! What's going on, everybody? Tuju Panda back in action. Talk about something else today, by something else about something that I've been wanting to talk about for a while now. So, mukbang videos. How do you feel about them? Me personally, I always found the idea kind of weird. Like, if I wanted to watch somebody eat, I'd go call up my father or maybe my friends and go to the local, like, all-you-can-eat buffet. Because, like, that's plenty of, like, watching somebody eat from across the table, right? In, like, real time. I don't really need to go on YouTube and, you know, click whatever, like, whatever mukbang channel happens to be out there. I mean, YouTube, what it is, it's a smorgasbord of various content, kind of like this channel, that caters to whatever audience happens to take interest in that sort of thing. I don't get it personally, because, you know, like, some of it's just kind of gross, it's like, do you really fixate on somebody eating? Now, if it's a hot girl, like, I could certainly see that. But at the same time, it's like, I've heard stories over the years of, like, people. It would be, like, some fat chick, but she's, like, voluptuous, voluptuously, like, endowed and has, like, big boobs and a curvaceous body. And um, looks just attractive enough that you look in her face and she's got the beauty there. If she lost about 50 pounds, she'd be, like, a 10 out of 10. But she ate a little too much, so now she's more like a 6 out of 10. But still fuckable. Um, it's like, I heard stories about people like, you know, that. They would complain, oh, I really want to go to this fancy restaurant, but I have no money. And there would be people offering her their credit card. Like, and just being like, yo, like, here's my credit card. Here's my credit card number. Get whatever you want, baby. Like, just keep it coming. And they do it. It's crazy. But, you know, what I'm trying to say here is there is something here for everybody, right? Anyway, um, me personally, some of these mukbang videos are interesting and kind of gross. We're about to cover a gross subject here, something that I've kind of been putting off. Mukbang videos were never really for me, and for whatever reason, it'd be once in a blue moon that YouTube would recommend one to me. Well... It's been for a while now that I keep hearing the name Nikado Avocado. And apparently, you know, from what I've been told and what I've heard, this guy's been having some problems for a long time now. Now, watching like 10 seconds of his content, the opinion that I formulated in my mind about this particular YouTuber is that, I don't know, like if I wanted to lose weight really fast, I would start, like, you know, binge-watching his content, all right? Like, I would just be watching that nonstop, trying to work down that weight. And, you know, it would probably only take one video for me to just be like, dude, I'm not eating for a whole week. I am quitting food, like cold turkey. Now, it might mean that I'm going to die within a month, but, hey, you know, I watched Platform. People can allegedly survive for a month without food. Now, you're going to be really fucking thin and probably be suffering from some health issues other than losing a massive amount of weight in a short amount of time. But hey, I'm willing to take that challenge if it means I don't have to see Nikado Avocado's fat fucking face again. Goddamn. But anyway, um, that's not the point. The point is that Nikado Avocado, it's like there's been recurrent, you know, like incidences or instances, I should say, of people that will do anything for the views, Okay. Now, me personally, like, I I see it as this. If you're good at something, you stick to it, and you improve over time, and maybe you're going to wind up on top someday. You're going to, like, you know, get a lot of followers. And if you're a niche channel, kind of like mine, um, you're going to attract the right kind of followers that are going to stick by you through thick and thin because they happen to like something about you that's unique and personable and, you know, but it's far be it for me to criticize. 
At the same time, though, Nakado Avocado, like, he used to look normal. Like, I remember early videos where he looked somewhat normal. He looked like an average dude. And then he started doing mukbang videos. And as he started doing mukbang videos, he got more attention, more traction, and he started doing these, like, kinds of videos where he'd be binge eating pizza or something like that or like you know a whole tub of lard for the sake of the views and it's like at what length are you going to go to like for the views like how much self-respect you know dignity and integrity are you going to sacrifice for some internet clout which may or may not stick by you for very long now obviously it's like if it's like a one-hit wonder type of video you know, you're like holding a box of hand grenades or something while you're like tap dancing in an ice storm and somebody manages to catch that on video and the grenades go off and you die. But, you know, someone recorded the whole thing and they post to YouTube and it's viral. Um, you know, you got your shot. You got your like 15 minutes of fame, but it just boggles my mind that somebody is basically destroying their whole fucking body. Like their body is slowly, gradually shutting down because they keep shoving like cheese in their fat fucking face but no my opinion about mukbang videos it really depends on the person eating me personally you know what i would do i'd be eating health food or i'd be eating exotic food that's what like that's what interests me out of mukbang videos if i had to watch something like my friend was like yo tooch you want to watch some mukbang videos i'd be like okay let's watch somebody eating a scorpion like that's impressive in fact, I've watched a video of a guy eating a scorpion, and it was alive. It was nasty as hell, but, you know, I was more out of admiration and respect for the guy for taking a bite, because that scorpion, it was not going down easy. Like, as he's, like, holding it to his mouth, that scorpion's, like, jabbing its little claws, and it's like, you know, it was fighting. You know, it was fighting the whole time. Fighting on the way in, and probably fighting on the way out when he had to shit out later. But, man, like, that was respect man like i wouldn't there's people on fear factor that wouldn't eat that shit um you know respect and me like i have korean heritage okay my mother i remember she ordered a bowl of silkworms and my father had some very colorful commentary about like korean cuisine um because like he thought they were barnacles like he looked at one at like a korean market and it was roasted in such a way that it looked like a barnacle um, I don't really particularly care for barnacles either. They look weird. Like, it's just basically a little circle with, like, whatever feathery goodness pops out in the low tide. But, yeah, like, those kinds of mukbang videos, I can get behind. But just, you know, eating the 50 spicy wing challenge and getting, like, sauce covered all over your face and just looking disgusting and gross. All that does for me is it makes me want to, like, you know, not eat for the next day or two. Just to, like, try to work out the memory. Because if I see, like, chicken wings... Like, chicken wings are delicious, okay? But watching enough mukbang videos like that... That can put me off of that food really fucking quick, okay? So, yeah. I don't know. Where did people get the appeal of Nikado Avocado? Because he doesn't seem... I know he's, like, playing up an act, you know? It's, like, all an act. It's not really authentically real. It's not, like, this presentation that I'm trying to give to you. But... Um, you know, he exaggerates everything and what few clips I've seen, I'm just like, dude, you're faking as hell. Like, this, you've, you've repeated yourself at least three times now in the same, like, bid. Like, what, what, what is your point? What are you trying to convey to the rest of us? That you're slowly destroying your own body for the views? Because that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. You know, and I think, I can think of, like, much better ways of trying to get views. Like, you know, I don't know, go skydiving with, like, a GoPro, like, cam shoved right up to your neck. And, like, people can see you jump out of the airplane and, like, be flying. It's like, oh, no, is it going to rip the cord in time? Or is, like, you know, the parachute going to fuck up at the last minute? We don't know. But, mm, 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 mm. Um, what's interesting is that Nikado Avogado, like... He has a, he apparently had a boyfriend, but they broke up, but they keep breaking up, coming back together, breaking up. And he's a mukbanger too. He's, he was featured in a couple videos. On top of which, there was the whole fact that like, he would participate. Then he decided when they broke up that he was going to start his own mukbang videos and do whatever. So there's that. But on top of all that, there's the fact that like, 
they were both doing it, and they were both suffering the consequences. Because Nakato, he's he made a point of it to like demonstrate how much damage he's done to his own body by consuming, you know, I don't know, like ten thousand calories a day. Like that, he, I, all I remember him eating is pizza, chicken wings, or McDonald's. And, like, a buffet of McDonald's. Imagine spending, like, enough to buy the amount of food to support a buffet. And, you know, there's people, like, starving in Africa or in China or in, like, less developed parts of the world. And here we have this glutton just, like, stuffing his fat face full of lard for the enjoyment or disgust. You know, some people like disgusting content, you know, for whatever reason. Of the internet. Like, all for the views. It's crazy. And, you know, as soon as he found out what got him the views, he went for it. But what, he, what it was, was eating the most calorie-dense material in vast quantities in a relatively short span of time. Kind of like he was in an all-you-can-eat buffet. Meets, like, you know, a fucking eating contest. It, I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. The world we live in is crazy. I don't get it sometimes. I don't understand. Help me understand. Help me help you. Nah, I'm just kidding. I think it's worth mentioning that, you know, Nick, he's also kind of been sent to the hospital, and he has to wear one of those weird sleep apnea machines, because um, apnea, apparently, like people that are heavy set or heavier than normal people, they have more of an issue when they go to sleep than people like you or I, because... We can probably just sleep on our side, and that has an effect on opening up your airways when you subconsciously start sleeping. You know? um, like Nick, when you have so much fat just clogging up everything, then you're prompted to snore. And snoring will cause you to basically, um, I forget the science exactly, but basically um, you'll wake up for like five seconds at a time, 10 seconds at a time, and the time periods in which you wake up briefly are so short that you don't remember them when you wake up after like a full night's sleep. But over time, that causes some sort of an arrhythmia, I think, with your heart. Like something happens with your heart where your heartbeat has an irregular heartbeat. And that just basically increases your chances of your heart like failing on you or having death, like premature death. Plus, you also feel tired as hell the next day. Um, I used to be a little bit more overweight, and they tried to get me on one of those machines. And I have to say, like, I wasn't even that overweight. I was maybe, you know, like a couple, like maybe 10 pounds overweight. It wasn't by much. It wasn't to the point where you have like a beer belly and like a fat ass. But it was kind of bad because, you know, they were trying to like, they're saying, uh, you seem to be suffering from sleep apnea. And sleep apnea can actually affect people that aren't even fat at all. So nowadays you have like those little like tape strips that you can put over like the bridge of your nose. Or maybe, I don't know, like, uh, you can get that weird thing that you put in your nose and it will supposedly stop you from snoring. I mention all of this because all of that excess weight is contributing to a lot of different uh, health effects that Nick seems to be going through. And they supposedly like broke their ribs a while back and like every time that they walked, like, you know, they would complain about pain. And like a couple of their videos was quite literally just them shoving pizza in their face and going, ow, 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 ow. And it's like, the doctor just told you not to put like stress on your body, number one, number two, like, the doctor just told you that you got out of a pretty serious ordeal. But Nick's response is, Hey, everybody. So, I know the doctor told me that I shouldn't do this, but, you know, I was just having this insane craving for pizza. And he's got, like, five boxes of pizza stacked tall. And these aren't just, like, you know, small pizzas or even medium pizzas. These are, like, the full fucking supreme size pizzas. The kind that you would take to, like, a beer party to, like, hand out a slice to everybody that's there while you're watching the game. That's the kind of, like, you know, size that he brought home with him for his next little challenge. And those are the videos that he was well known to make. Like, just, you know, food stacked to the brim, like, on either side of him and just gorging on all of this stuff. I am actually, you know, slightly, you know, off topic, but I'm wondering what my father would think about all this because my father, 
Like, he's a red-blooded American conservative Republican, and I'll be honest with you, um, it makes some of, like, it makes me not want to hang out with him as much, you know, because he's very old-fashioned, he's very, he's almost like an anachronism from the 1950s, minus the racism. It mostly boils down to, like, um, I don't know about misogyny, though. Like, you know, he he's made some commentary about women, so, like, the racism is off the table, but the misogyny might still be there. I don't know. Like, you know, I, I'm i kind of too afraid to ask, all right? Because, like, some of the commentary he makes, I can only infer based on what he says. But, you know, it's whatever. Like, he was from a different generation. Um, but I'm actually very curious about what he has to say, because, like, him being conservative and stuff, like, um, all of this... Like, if he knew how much I played VR chat or just, like, enjoyed myself and what I was doing, um, he would have some, like, very harsh criticisms and opinions about the things that I'm into. So, I only try to, like, cover certain things sporadically. He hasn't found my YouTube channel yet. Granted, I don't think he really, uh, he, I don't think he's looked too hard. I don't think he knows I have a YouTube channel. Let's keep it that way. Um... But, like, I can only imagine the kind of commentary. He'd be, like, remarking about how gluttonous and needlessly wasteful this kind of behavior is. Because, um, here's the thing. If that's what you want to do, I believe wholeheartedly that you should have the right to eat whatever you want to do in whatever amount. You are a big boy or girl, whoever you might be, watching this channel right now. And you have the right to go into a store and buy like a super supreme deluxe cheesy gordita crunch and just gorge on that shit if that's what you want to do because you know we all want to just like let loose like grab something to eat real quick maybe eat that cheesy gordita crunch or like that you know stacked the brim chalupa with all the fixings but um when you're doing it for an audience and you're doing it at the detriment of your own personal health that just disgusts me um, it doesn't disgust me so much that, like, you know, it disgusts me in multiple, multitude of different ways. One, you are making a complete slob of yourself, okay? All that sauce dribbling down your fucking chin and, like, neck and shit like that, that's disgusting, all right? Number one. Number two, if you're going to do something for the views, one, you should know what you're getting yourself into, and two, don't take any unnecessary risks. And, like, you know that, f you know, overweight people have a higher chance of dying or developing congenital health problems as a result of them being so overweight than, you know, people that maintain an active lifestyle and go outside every other day. Um, you know, just enough said. But, you know, Nick, it's like people are already calling bets on when he's going to be dying of a heart attack or a stroke or whatever i don't know but i'm not saying that i wish for that but given the fact that they've been to like the hospital a couple times and supposedly need a nurse to make sure that they are like able to live a relatively normal life the warning signs are already appearing like the writing's already on the wall all right it only like takes just a little bit more of this how many more videos can he be able to produce before he just craps out and furthermore if you happen to be a fan of nick avocado like you know just maybe make a comment in the description here or like on the youtube channel and just tell me why you watch it like are you an actual fan do you enjoy and support what he's doing or are you just here to watch the slow moving train wreck kind of like with christian you know people weren't watching christian because they genuinely liked them they were watching them because they just kind of wanted to watch this slow moving train wreck in action and were mildly amused at whatever crazy hijinks he got himself into whichever like side of the audience you happen to be i'm just genuinely curious okay um but yeah this is mukbang videos just seem like vapid mindless entertainment you know, just somebody eating something. Now, if they're eating something truly exotic, like an octopus or something like that, I don't know. Like, and if they're like mildly attractive, I don't know. But uh, if they look average, that's fine too. If they're like reviewing the food and saying, hey, 
I just tried Pad Thai for the first time. It's amazing. You should go out and try it. Like, that adds value. That's something to talk about. That's the, you know, that's the person that's recording the video interacting with their viewers. Although it's a really one-sided conversation until the comments start rolling in, but, you know, at least there's something. Nikado Avocado just acts like a dipshit on camera while he's eating, and it's a fake-ass act. Like, just acts like a child. Like, a toddler. A man-child. And they're like, what, 28 years old, 29 years old? No, they're pushing 30, at least. And they're already ruining your body. And when you hit 30, um, your body starts to change a little bit. You're not quite as fast as you used to be. You're not quite as ready or, like, you know, confident in your abilities, maybe. Some people, some 30-year-olds, they, they're maintaining, you know? They got those muscles. They got, like, you know, they work out. They keep their mind sharp. But most people that use the internet quite often don't fall in that category, all right? They spend way too much time behind the internet, behind the computer screen, just tapping away, being keyboard warriors and whatever. Like, I'm not trying to, like, shit on you all. I'm guilty of it too. I could definitely improve. But I'm nowhere near, even on the radar, of this Nikado Avocado guy. So where do we go from here? Well, <laughs> um, two ways this is going to go down. Somebody's going to have a stern talk with him and say, all right, there is a divergence in this path ahead. If you go this way, you'll be on the path of recovery and, you know, potentially be able to improve your health and your chances of living past 40. If you go this direction, you're not going to live past 40. All right, period. So make the choice now, think long and hard and get back to me. And Nikado Avocado is just going to look and just be like, I want the views. Give me the views. All the clout. I want all the internet clout right here. I want money, success, fame, ambition, all in the palm of my hand right now, right now, right now. And the internet might be there to help him out, support his Patreon. But like, he doesn't seem like a very nice person. He doesn't seem like he's, you know, being nice to his audience. In fact, I remember distinctively he was like eating and like just shoving like a pizza slice in his face. It's like, you did this to me. You, all of you, you did this to me. And it's like, dude, you did that to this yourself. Your reward for doing that to yourself was the views, was the subscriber count, was the Patreon money. If people were still supporting his Patreon. But other than that, like that's on you, bud. So you paid with your health and time on this earth for internet clout that could be gone tomorrow for any reason i mean what if nikado avocado got canceled to my knowledge he's just a gay guy that likes to eat food he really likes food you know like jump for joy loves food <laughs> but i don't know it's it's a complicated subject i guess just the biggest mystery here are the people that genuinely like his content that's the biggest mystery to me um but i don't get it i just don't get it you know, I already told you the kind of mukbangs videos I'd watch. And I will tell you this. If I ever become n like even half as fat as Nikado Avocado, I'm going to look up his old videos. I'm going to binge watch them because that's going to incentivize me to never be a fat fuck like that. I guess I don't have anything else to say. I just wanted to provide my two cents and commentary about the whole thing because it was outrageous, you know. <laughs> but anyway, I think I've spoken on this subject long enough. Till next time, guys, take care and peace. I hope you all have a better one. Hey, everybody. Before I go, I just wanted to make mention of something. So, my longtime friend, main man, South Texas Fail, he's head of Keep the Rick Rib Alive Foundation, all right? He's the CEO, he's the head spokesperson, and he basically does all the PR, you know, interactions with various other people. Um, but yeah... Nikado Avocado is starting to look like a prime candidate for the Keep the McRib Alive Foundation, where they take fat people, they fatten them up even more. You know, this sounds like a good money-making scheme to not only boost profits through Patreon dollars and coffee donations, but also um, when the person, you know, expires, 
they can become a McRib and we can bring the McRib back because, you know, fat people's flesh and texture, those pounds that go all into that, that's pretty much like pork, right? So, you know, I'm just saying, I'm putting it out there before something happens, like a premature <clears throat> heart attack <clears throat> or, you know, a weight induced fall. Um, you know, he could be a prime candidate, a prime candidate for recruitment for the Keep the McRib Alive Foundation. Because you all like the McRib, right? I mean, sure, it's an overpriced sandwich that has a little bit of that honey glaze over it, but it's delicious, and it's fantastic, and it's offered by nothing other than McDonald's. Um, so, you know, if you want to see, you know, the McRib come back in sustainable numbers to the point that it is a permanent item on the menu, you know, just think about it. Look at Nikado Avocado. Um, he's getting pretty fat these days. He's complaining about it. He's starting to suffer the heart like palpitations and things like that. But that's okay. That is fine. Because, you know, the Keep the McRib Alive Foundation has very powerful lawyers. And um, they have enough of a, you know, support staff to make sure that Nikado Avocado lives just long enough to become a little bit fatter so they can get turned to the McRib. So, contribute today, support your local Keith McRib Alive Foundation, call your spokesperson, and give your pledges. Okay. Let's go have some fun. Hey fellas, thanks for watching the video. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Would you care to hit that like button and subscribe for more? I'd greatly appreciate it. 